Hello guys, welcome to a new video on Tower of God New World and in this video I'm going to go over the update maintenance for this Wednesday and we're also going to look at the kits for both Asensio and Reflejo. So yeah, that's the plan and we can just get started with the update maintenance. We have the usual uh, time frame and the usual 1000 suspendium and we can have a look at what we're going to get. We're going to get two new teammates, the SSR Plus Data Kun Asensio and the SSR Reflejo. Then we're going to get two new cool costumes, uh, the one for Kun Asensio and the one for Data Machini. And then we're going to get the re-release of the previous five uh, costumes that were released last year. Then what do we have here? Uh, a story that will give us and summons basically, then we're going to get more floors. We're going to get the two new ignition weapons. We still have no information, so we will have to wait for the actual update before we, we know what they're going to do. Well, we have a kind of a general idea from the dev notes, but we have no uh, like precise data or anything, just some random stuff. So no point in talking about them. Let's just wait it out and see. I have more than 4,000 keys, so on Wednesday, I will go live and I will also be farming these new sets and trying them out on some units. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And yeah, then we have the story event for the Kun Family Festival, the exchange shop, the missions, and also the event boss battle. And well, in here, I'm pretty sure there is no special summon other than the one for Kuna Sensor. So we don't have another one for an old SSR Plus unit, but we might be getting Kun Eden maybe next week. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see, or if they keep on going with the units that appeared in the anime, we might get Karaka next week, who knows? Or maybe we won't get any additional uh, special summon banner. We have no idea, but we don't have one uh, in this update notice. Then what do we have? The full festival check-in, trial mission, uh, the boost mission for both Kun Asensio and Reflejo, tower fun run event, uh, and the dice consumption ranking race. So they are, they are making the race based on the amount of dices you use. So this one was like the Monopoly game where you throw the dices and you go over different cells or whatever and you get rewards based on the cell you end up in. Stuff like that. Then we have Alliance Expedition and a Revolution Room. So a lot of rewards here. Hopefully we can clear it out if they didn't increase the difficulty. Most of us, now that we have Revolution for SSR units, we should be getting full, like we should be getting to floor 300, was it, I think. Uh, so clear all those stages and we should be uh, able to get all free resources, but we'll see. Then we have Secret Floor Rate Up Event. This one should be only for the two new ignition weapons that they are adding. Uh, then we have the Special Summon for Queen Asensio, where you saw that. New products, probably the check-in stuff, etc., that they are releasing with every Special Summon banner, which is pretty good, though a bit expensive, but not bad at all. Uh, then we have the Stage Jump feature that's only useful below Floor 20, so nothing really that big. App icon change, okay, cool, whatever. Uh, increasing revolution currencies for weekly month admission, the addition of adventure chapters. So if you were to clear uh, floor 110, then you're getting the additional, the usual increase, which is like 10% or something for the weekly, for the monthly, I don't remember. Insulink link level expansion. So 1000 is not going to be the cap anymore. We're going to get additional levels. I mean, or later they would have done it so it's fine i guess improvement and modification revolution room event improvements tower fun, tower fun run event improvement daily and weekly mission improvements i'm looking forward to what that is out of progress in mode improvements uh, i think they mentioned that in the dev notes uh, i don't remember what it was like Maybe it was to start it while you're fighting. So like you fight by mistake, you remove it. You can restart the auto progress while fighting, something like that, it should be. So that would be pretty cool because it happens to me fairly often. So yeah, other improvements, whatever, bug fixes, and that's pretty much it. There is not much. We have a lot of events overlapping kind of, that's good. 
And I'm also looking forward to the rate up because as you as I said before, I have a lot of keys. And we'll see during the live stream. Then let's have a look at the new units. We have Reflejo. And this guy is again where the new a purple warrior. And we can have a look first at the video and then we can have a look at the kits. It's going to be pretty basic. Yeah, I don't care uh, about what it's going to say. This attack looks like Joaquin a special move, but it's just static and whatever. This attack is really super basic. And this is the special move, it's just an AoE attack. Nothing much. I would say the kit is not that great aesthetically. But let's have a look at what it does. So we have, well, let's start with the passive. We have Reflejo uses basic attacks that deal damage to enemies within range in a fan-shaped area. When the last basic attack hit lands, target have their evasion decreased by a certain percentage for number of seconds, max certain number of stacks. Reflejo gains one fragment of shadow, max number of stacks. Once he reaches a certain number of stacks, uh, they are consumed to increase Reflejo physical pierce by a certain percentage and decrease damage taken by a certain percentage for a certain number of seconds. So yeah, that's pretty cool, I would say. He has AoE basic attacks, which is definitely nice against teams that have a lot of uh, like close range units. The evasion decrease is okay. I wouldn't say it's needed right now, but it's fine and it's going to be more helpful probably in PvP, I'd say, than it is in Adventure. But definitely an okay debuff. And then we have this mechanic here to increase his physical peers. I doubt he's going to have a lot of damage, but it's okay. Would have been better if it was like team physical peers or whatever, but it's okay. The decreased damage taken is also nice to have him survive a bit more, but we have no information about the actual percentages. Then we have the first active, this Death Moon Shadow with this. I don't even want to say what those look like, but okay. He's going to uh, launch Shadow, Shadow Shinsu in a fan shaped area to deal a percentage of his attack as damage. And then he's going to plant shadows that. How, how do you even plant? Now? No, whatever. And enemies Shinsu to decrease their evasion by a certain percentage for a number of seconds then deal a percentage of his attack as additional damage using them in Moon. And that's pretty much it, another evasion decrease. So, okay, I guess. Uh, but there is not much to this uh, first active. Then we have the other active skill, uh, is going to slash the enemy in, a, in the shape of a cross, whatever, to deal a percentage of his attack as damage a certain number of times. And it's going to absorb their shadow for a certain number of seconds if the last attack lands, so only the last one. And it's going to steal physical and magic resistance from the enemy. So it's going to be buffed and debuff the enemy. Pretty cool. And then here we have the special move is going to swing uh, the site to deal a percentage of his attack as damage to the nearby enemies and send them airborne. And is going to Cap the damage it takes up, up to a certain percentage of his max HP, pretty much the same as Meliodas, and he's going to be invincible while using the skill. That's all the information we have here. Is not much, I will say. It's nice that he's going to decrease enemy evasion and increase his own physical and magic resistance while also debuffing the enemy. So it's okay. You can use him in whatever team you want, basically looking at the kit itself. So it's fine. I don't know if I really care about this unit that much. It's not really bringing anything insane to the table. It's just okay at best, I would say. Uh, it would be different maybe if uh, it's going to get really good Exclusive Achievement of Revolution that we have no information about. Maybe to add an additional HP recovery block because the one that Vargarv has, I don't really like it that much. Uh, so if he had a different one or I've, I really have no idea. Like, more debuffs, because that's all uh, we really care about. It doesn't have a lot of CC other than the uh, special move, but also looking at the video, it didn't last long. 
So I don't know. The rest is just basic stuff. But the information provided is solid. It can definitely be used. I doubt it's going to be a mass pool, especially considering we're going to get Trump Ray soon. So I wouldn't really bother too much. Even though normal summon tickets and Trump Ray don't really have a strict correlation, I don't I don't think you're going to use special summon like uh, sorry, Thunder summon tickets uh, for Trump Ray in any way because it's not going to be added there uh, at first. So whatever. You can use them if you have them. Uh, there is really no big reason to be saving the standard summon tickets, but for sure don't spend any kind of suspendium in this. Then the second unit is going to be Kun Asensio. This guy is going to be a yellow warrior. Again, we already knew that. Let's have a quick look at the video and then we can have a look at the skills as well. Glide through the Shinty flying fish. He's pretty cool, but I would have liked him a lot earlier, probably. Whatever, one active skill, the second active skill. He's not doing anything while uh, up in the air. This one is pretty slow. Probably we're going to get Exclusive Kimento Revolution to speed it up, but yeah. That's more or less it. A pretty basic kit, if you ask me, nothing too fancy or whatever. So let's just read what it does. Uh, the passive is going to be if a flying fish, which is the like points of his lance uh, that he's throwing with the special move, uh, is not present on the battlefield, Sensi is going to recover a certain number of energy every second. And if a flying fish is present on the battlefield, Sensi's HP does not fall below a certain number, and his attack increases by a percentage. This buff cannot be removed with buff removal skills. This is pretty good. Depending on the actual uptime of the special move, we can make him uh, recover a lot of energy with certain teammates. But I'm going to talk about what I think is going to be the downside once we get to the special move. So for now, I will say the passive, pretty awesome. Uh, the effect is really, really good. But I think there are going to be issues with this unit. It's going to be a pain in the ass in the enemy team, but in our, eh, well, whatever. Uh, we'll see. Then we have the first active skill, the one where it's going to be uh, stuck in the air, basically. It's going to be immune to such effects and it's going to spin uh, his spear to block projectile, dealing damage to nearby enemies a certain number of time, and jolting them. If a flying fish is present on the battlefield, it's also going to recover HP based on the damage dealt. And that's pretty much it. I will say uh, usually active skills are cannot be cancelled. So from my point of view, this is more of a debuff than anything, uh, because it kind of forces you to build resistances. Uh, I'm going to say why once we get to the special move, but yeah, whatever. Just I don't really like this skill, uh, to be totally honest. It, I just think it's pretty bad. Actually, if it wasn't there, probably this guy would be stronger. But yeah. Then we have the other active skill. And he's going to swing his spear to deal a percentage of his attack as damage a certain number of times. And if there is a flying fish present on the battlefield, the skill is guaranteed to land. And he's going to silence the target for a certain number of seconds. Pretty cool. And each time a flying fish successfully lands an attack, the skill's cooldown decreases. This is pretty cool, I will say. This active skill is actually nice. And then we have the uh, special move. Which is Asensio, uh, whatever, throws the flying, a certain number of flying fishes. We saw in the video it was two. I don't know if it increases with skill level. I doubt it. Uh, and it's going to deal, like each of them is going to deal a percentage of Asensio attack to all enemies in their path. And it's going to decrease physical resistance by a percentage for a certain number of seconds with a certain number of max stacks. And they're going to last for a certain duration and bounce off the edges of the battlefield and this skill can only be activated when there are no flying fish present on the battlefield this to me is the biggest issue and what can cause you to die unless you go for uh, like resistances in his kit because let's say you manage to throw this skill uh, quickly and you have flying fishes around 
then you have max energy, but you have to wait for your fishes to expire before you can cast it. Now, let's say uh, like your flying fishes are about to expire and you cast this active skill that makes you stuck for a certain amount of time there while dealing damage. It cannot be interrupted to cast the special move, so you're stuck there in that stance. And the flying fish expire, the enemy one shots you. If, you're, if you don't have resistances, you're going to die immediately. That's how I think this skill is going to work and interact, and I don't like it at all. But again, since we have a resistance shred and a lot of other ways in the kit to increase damage, kind of, we also need to see how much this attack increase actually is. But like, we have ways to increase damage. It might be fine to go with resistances, but this guy at that point is just the usual tank and is not going to provide a lot to the team. This physical resistance shred uh, is not useful in yellow, I'd say, other than compress rack and data work. And data work also has the physical resistance shred already. Could be more useful in other teams uh, if you have a physical damage dealer, sure. Uh, but I don't know. Mm, I really don't know. And we also need to see, like, since while is casting the special move is not invincible uh, even if you're not stuck in this one and you're full, full damage build uh, and you could cast this move during the animation of the special move it might die now we often get revolution that make units invincible while they're casting the special move could be the case here as well at which point totally fine uh, this guy is going to be pretty strong even with a full damage build but we don't know they might even just remove entirely this uh, restriction so that you can cast it multiple times and just increase the number of flying fishes that would be pretty insane just think of the new anak and him and that's it uh it would be pretty cool it's just going to keep casting the special move is going to be always invincible uh, it would be pretty nice but yeah i don't know mm, it doesn't really seem too insane is nice. This silence is pretty cool. The passive is interesting, and he has a lot of invisibility, which is definitely cool. But it, again, I don't think it's going to be that relevant of a unit unless Exusekiment and Revolution are going to be stacked. But we're going to get Trom Ray soon, guys. So if you are a free to play player, just wait. Uh, to see exactly how much investment th this guy needs and if he's going to be super broken, like a Kaiser, for example, in terms of power. Uh, otherwise, I'd just say save your resources and wait for Trump Ray. I don't really see a reason to go for this unit. I will max him out. Uh, I will do the same for every single unit in this game. So you can just uh, like join my live stream me testing you out and then you can make your own decision yeah that's more or less it guys let me know what you think of these new units and the update in the comments down below and i will see you guys in the next video bye